Up to this point, we haven't had that much competition in the flip phone market in the US. We had a couple of opportunities in the past, but nothing really came to market. And what we've seen to come to the market has always been a more of a mid-ranger experience, never really competing toe-to-toe -to -toe with what Samsung's been offering, which is a flagship experience, processor, and of course, specifications. Well, Motorola finally in 2023 brought in two competitors. The one that we're gonna talk about today is the Razer Plus 2023. Now, it's also known as the Razer 40 Ultra internationally with slightly modified specifications, but the core experience is very much the same. This is TK and this is my review of the, obviously the Razer Plus 2023, but also wanna to talk to you guys about why is it that every time I use this device, I just keep getting surprised. Let's check it out. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. In front of us, we have the Razer Plus 2023. Now, the one I have obviously is in a blue color. There's three different colors available, but the vegan leather version, which is the red one, is going to be available specifically through T-Mobile as well as Motorola's main site. And that's going to be the only one with the vegan leather. But this one has a very nice soft material backing, and I really like this. There's basically the black, the green, and of course, what we have with the red one. The box itself is pretty much uh, self-explanatory, uh, low waist, basically cardboard, nothing big inside uh, other than the actual phone, and of course a SIM removal tool, and everything else is pretty much there, that's it. Uh, you do need a 30 watt charger to be able to charge this device, although it does work with almost every power delivery uh, uh, charging brick that I've been using, so this is not going to be a big issue. It is not included in the box, but if you do decide to pick it up, this is what it would look like. It's a USB-C connection, and it's going to work perfectly with our device. And surprisingly, that actually is the charging speed that we have on the Razer Plus. Now, before we get too far, let's go ahead and put the box away and let's talk about the other competition on the market right now. That's actually pretty much the only competition that we have in the US market. Uh, now, obviously, we're not covering all of the information coming up with the Z Flip 5. There's going to be other things coming up that has not launched. At this current date, the Z Flip 4 is the, what's available directly from Samsung, and this is going to be what we have as a competitor. Now, again, as I mentioned to you guys, I did get a chance to check out the standard version of the Razer that has not launched, which will look a little bit more closely to the Flip 4, although I feel like the display on the Flip 4 is slightly better there. But from a configuration standpoint, when we put them next to each other, we'll notice the biggest thing between the two is that now we actually have no gap. That's one of the biggest differences in here. The display on the Razer is actually folding inside of the actual mechanism. You can kind of see how it goes in there. And it allows it to actually have a much more uh, less pronounced crease, but it also provides us the ability of having a fully closed clamp. Uh, both of them support SIM and eSIM. Of course, both of them have stereo speakers. Uh, both of them have uh, similar charging speeds and similar batteries. The 3800 milliampere that we have in here is slightly bigger, but again, overall about 3800, 3750. The biggest thing I would say is the limiting factor here is of course the form factor. You cannot have that much of a bigger battery. But what I will say though is from what I understand is at least on the standard version of the Razer, it is gonna be supporting a bigger battery because it has a smaller display. Here we have a full back display. Let's go ahead and turn it on. This display actually covers the entire back of the phone and you can definitely see it right there. And we have scrollable applications. We can literally launch every app in here on the display by adding it or actually continuing using it directly from there. Let's go ahead and swipe back. We'll do the games in a little bit. And of course, last but not least, we have the dialer, the ability of launching it and customizing our experience. Um, in the applications, you're able to actually add other things like I have WhatsApp in here and Netflix is installed. Yes, you do see this Call of Duty mobile in here. Uh, Chrome installed as well, YouTube Music, YouTube uh, Studio in there, all of the things that I want. Uh, and I can add other things. Now, one thing I want you to notice, if I press and hold on the little shortcut button here, this allows me to actually change the resolution of the game. So what I mean by this here, let's go ahead and launch. Uh, let's, let's launch this game. I've been playing this for quite a bit. If I press and hold it, it launches into a small window. Press and hold it again, goes in bigger. I can also do it from the recent section. If I click it, I can just go in there, click it again, and it'll open up as a big screen. The biggest thing I will say is with the top, obviously access to the toggles, all of our toggles on the phone. And of course, swiping from the bottom, getting access to the recents, you can swipe back, do everything that you want. A single button touches and gives us access to the battery level as well as notifications that kind of pop up on the left of that. But the biggest thing I will say is this is something that we don't have built in here. Now this is running cover OS, but you could see how much smaller the display and the functions that we have here are much more limited. So that's gonna be one of the biggest things. But as far as if you wanna be able to see a comparison, please let me know. And of course, what we're gonna also talk about is the other major player in the market. And the reason I mentioned this, even though this is not available in the US, is that the Find N2 Flip brings in a, a unique experience into the large display form factor. 
This is actually a, quite a bit larger than what we have here. It's not as large as here, but it's a much more functional display where I'm able to actually unlock the device. Let's go ahead and use the fingerprint sensor. We unlocked it there. I can swipe down, access to my toggles. I can swipe up, access to my notifications. We can change different camera modes, check the weather, a whole bunch of other functional things, even playing Spotify directly from the cover screen. And that's one of the main unique things. We actually have some improvements over what we've seen from Samsung. And the reason why I wanted to share with you guys here is because up to this point, this has been the only other option available internationally for a foldable that gives us the ability of having a bigger, more functional display. This display is so much better and of course, more functional in the sense that we can actually do things with it. Now, Motorola takes it to the next level, and I think this is where things change. Now, conversely, before we go too far, both of these devices are fully flat, and there's no crease, there's no opening in between. You cannot see any light, and you can definitely see there's no way of seeing through them, and I think that's one of the biggest benefits here over at least what we've seen from Samsung. Nothing that there's wrong here, but the problem is, as with over usage over time, things can definitely fall inside and, of course, get the damage or even bother uh, the device itself. The crease here is definitely a little bit more pronounced, so I'll say that much. It's easier. It's very easy to basically run your finger through it. Um, on the M2 Flip, it's a lot less pronounced and of course, much better experience here. Let's go ahead and do that here. And you can see definitely right here, it's much, much less pronounced. You can barely even see it on the actual display. Going over on the Z, uh, the Razer, Again, very much the same experience. And the reason behind that is because it allows the display to fold in. And that's one of the biggest differences in technologies. Obviously, you saw this at the beginning of the introduction. This is called the Retro Razor. It allows me to actually launch a specific, almost like an Easter egg that's available directly within the notification panel. And you're able to add that directly. It's called the Retro Razor. By clicking it, it will launch it and it'll give you a design look. If you're familiar with the Razor, the, the OG Razor, this pretty much runs the same. And you can actually use it and type in numbers. This is not actually just a screen. Uh, and of course, you can definitely dial and if you click the uh, messaging, it'll open up the uh, Google Messages. Your standard applications will launch. It just, it's a very nice, unique thing. Uh, what I want to start by saying is, first and foremost, is the specifications that we have here are pretty much top-notch. 8 Plus Gen 1 is part of the processor. In the US, this is an 8256 model only. In the international market, it's going to be 12 to 512, depending on the market and uh, depending on the carrier that you're able to get it with. It's going to change slightly, but of course, the specification at their core, the 8 Plus Gen 1, is going to be powering it. The display that we have in here, which is also very unique, no other flip phone has this right now, is a 10, well, 6.9 inch display running at 165 hertz. You heard me correctly, 165 hertz on the internal display at a 6.9 inch display. On the outside display, this is where it becomes a little bit even bigger than some of the other experiences. Not only it's a larger display, it's a 3.6 inch display running at 144 hertz. Crazy enough specifications of 144 on the outside and 165 on the inside. And uh, just so you know, if you're looking at this and you're trying to compare, and like if you get this device and you're like, my phone is not running at this speed, you do need to turn on these functions directly within game mode. Those are the only options available for us to be able to get those speeds. And that's how I was able to actually get uh, Chrome to show me that the specification, because I was actually able to go in there and then turn that on and make Chrome a game of sorts in the game launcher. Um, 3,800 milliampere battery. We have 30 watt charging that is again wired directly into the bottom. Uh, we also have wireless 5 watt charging, so definitely very nice. 5 watt charging on the back. And last but not least, again, the 3,800 milliampere battery, it should be able to last you quite a bit. Uh, for me, it's about a day or so. And that's primarily because I found myself almost rarely ever having to open the phone. My biggest thing about the flip in the past was always that I could not do much with the display. Even if I got a notification, I always had to kind of interact with it in the sense where I had to open up the app. I can open up Google Maps in here and then go straight into the mapping application, navigate from here, never have to open the phone. And one of the biggest benefit is the power consumption on the external display is much lower, will extend the battery. And I think this is the biggest difference here. The big thing about the difference is the display not only covers the entire display, you're able to customize it to actually go above or under the cameras. If sometimes the UI elements hides behind the camera, that's going to be something that you want to do. But otherwise, you can customize it. You can go in there. And again, you can just basically hit the plus sign, scroll down, find whatever application you want to add. You click it, you add it, and it adds it into the playlist here. The camera obviously is there. And I'll sure, obviously, you are aware that this is a Motorola. So all you have to do literally is just shake it and it'll turn on. Well, do it again and it'll open up the camera. And this is also one of the things that you want to be aware is uh, there is multiple options in here. Not only do you have photo, you have video, you have slow motion, 
portrait fi uh, picture mirror, obviously, if you want to use it. And they have this new function called Photo Booth. Now, Photo Booth is really, really cool. It's a function that allows you to actually start taking pictures. So what you do is just set up the phone straight up on the table and you basically start the Photo Booth and it'll take a series of snapshots, as I'm going to share with you guys right now, um, that are line still candid. So it's kind of like being in a Photo Booth where you put a dollar or five dollars and it'll start taking pictures and you know, and it'll keep taking pictures as you're taking them right now. And last but not least, once you have all of them, it'll save them in the actual library. And the pausing that I'm doing for you guys is or those pictures that we're sharing with you guys right now. So this is exactly how it is. Very nice, very simple. But the main benefit is all of this is still not being done with the internal display. I do want to share with you guys when we go into the actual video side, this is where it gets very cool. We're able to jump in from 9 by 16 one by one but we're also able to do 4k at, and of course full hd and this is 4k at 60 frames per second we're not talking 4k regular 4k 60 frames per second on the external display so we're using the primary sensors and we're not losing any benefits flipping it over on the inside if we go directly into the camera very much the same experience you're able to jump over you can do 4k and of course we can jump in swipe down change that over to 60 frames per second and this continues to the front 4K 60 frames per second is going to be the resolution that we're also able to shoot on the sensor, on the front, and on the back. Let me go ahead and give you guys a quick sample from the internal camera, the external camera in open mode, and of course, closed clam style. So we're going to start off with the front-facing camera on the brand new Razer Plus. Now, the biggest thing obviously is 4K 60 frames per second on the front-facing camera. That's the internal sensor on the display. Now, we're still able to use that resolution when we're recording on the outside because we can use the external display to feature all of the same benefits, basically 4K capability. And I really love the fact that they were able to bring it in to this device and, of course, at this price point. But let's go ahead and switch over to the main sensor on the back and see if there's any improvements in processing on the Razer Plus. I went ahead and switched over to the primary sensor on the back. Now, the maximum resolution is 4K60, although we lose the preview functionality when we're doing 4K60. And I feel like that's primarily due to the temperatures and, of course, the 4K60 demanding a little bit more power from the system. But if you're using 4K 30 frames per second, you should be able to use uh, the front display to be able to see yourself. Conversely, the actual display is so mirror-like that I can actually see myself, and as long as I can see myself in the display, the reflection that is, I'm actually in frame and of course it looks really good. Switching over now to the external display, shooting at 4K60 with the external display. So if you're using the just the external panel, you close the phone in a clamp style, you're able to shoot 4K60 frames per second. The resolution that we get here is either 1x1 or 9x16, so the video is a little bit different format, but you shouldn't have any problem propping it down to 16x9 if you'd like to be able to do that. The biggest benefit here is that I'm using this with the external display, and of course we're recording it on the brand new Razer Plus. Now as you saw there, the experience is definitely very nice. I I will say that the main sensor is on the outside, that the 12 megapixel primary sensor is definitely going to be the best performer, even though that we have a higher megapixel, the 32 megapixel on the inside. And that's primarily because of the actual pixel size and the actual sensor itself. The 13 megapixel ultra wide is also definitely very nice, helps us actually also achieve macro shots. So that's one of the reasons we have a macro option on the camera. And of course, the last but not least is the ability of actually using some of those new cool features like a horizon lock that we've seen before. And that enables us to actually lock the horizon when you start the video. An example would be once I start shooting a video and I turn on horizon lock, well, when I start, when I set up horizon lock and start a video, the actual, as you can see here in the demo I'm showing you guys right now, it actually stays very much configured to that her, the horizon that you have set at the beginning of the video. So even if you turn the phone, as long as you're still facing in the right direction, all of that stays the same. And it's really a cool feature that I love that they brought over from the Edge Plus, uh, well, the Edge Plus 2023. And it's definitely very appreciated. So overall, from a design specifications, there is exactly no reason why this doesn't make sense. So we're going to talk about camera performance as far as pictures, and we'll definitely cover it there. Uh, what I do want to talk to you guys a little bit more right now is the fact that this actually supports something called Ready4. Now, if you're familiar with Ready4, Motorola has had this on multiple versions of their devices, and this is something that they've had that enables us to actually use a desktop experience mode. Let's turn on NFC one more time. And that's something that they've had for some time and that allows us to actually broadcast to a PC or to a TV. And this one actually supports wireless ready for. Now wireless ready for, I'm gonna share with you guys real quick, a quick sample here, is something that you're able to do to broadcast to a TV over Wi-Fi and you can broadcast your TV or your content from your phone and play games, watch movies from it. Everything will play on that TV like we've seen it before with ready for, it just doesn't work wires, well wired. Except for, and this is where it becomes very interesting, is if you use something called the Next Stock. Now, this is not made by Bornorola. This is actually made by Next Stock. And the big thing about this is this is the latest one that they released. It's called the Next Stock Wireless. 
The reason behind that is this allows me to use this computer or this shell of a computer, which essentially for the most part is just a monitor, a keyboard, a mouse, um, and of course a built-in battery, a display. Uh, we have the ability of adding USB a peripheral. This is a mini HDMI in here. We also have the ability of inputting video into it uh, or connecting a device into it. The reason why this makes perfect sense is because I'll actually now use a headphone jack with this. Now this does support micro SD, but it's not supported when you're using it wirelessly. And of course we have a power button. What I'm showing you guys right now is me turning on ready for on the obviously the Razer Plus and broadcasting that signal directly into the next dock and then connecting it over USB-C to allow the keyboard and mouse from the next dock to become a basically a peripheral attachment because that's an automatic thing when you connect it. So not only am I charging my phone from the battery that's built into the next dock, I'm also using the keyboard and mouse from the next dock and the headphone jack from the next dock to interface with my phone and my phone's connectivity, 5G, Wi-Fi, whatever service I'm using. Also, all of the internal storage that we have on the phone is fully accessible directly within either of the four options that we have directly within Ready4. So this is one of the biggest improvements that I don't think any other flip phone has on the market right now is leveraging Motorola's Ready4 technology in a portable solution, making it so that my flip, well, I guess my, uh, my Razer Plus right now will work like a full functioning laptop using a next stock. And this is actually a very good accessory for almost every Samsung device I've ever had in the past. But right now, this makes the Razer Plus a powerhouse of a device. Of course, we have stereo speakers on here. We have a great camera built in into this. And of course, customizations to be able to go in there, customize the colors on the device, all the different settings and all the options that we've seen in the past directly from Motorola. The biggest thing I'll probably say is there is a specific section here for the external display where you're able to customize all of the different options from color setting, live preview, app settings, display font, uh, panels, the ability to changing them, reorganizing them, changing the wallpaper on there, as well as also the lock screen information as far as the different uh, toggles or options that we have. Once you have that configured and set up, everything runs beautifully. Uh, internally, the display will run at 120 hertz refresh rate maximum if you're not using game mode. Externally, the display will run at 90 frames per second when you're not using game mode. So that's something to keep in mind. When you turn on game mode within the system in here, you go in, let's say on the game, you go into the settings tab, you can go to refresh rate and you can customize it down to the level that you want. It's 144 external, 165 internal specifically there. And what I end up having to do, which is really kind of funny, is I ended up make, making Chrome as a game for it to turn on these functionalities and for me to be able to demo for you guys the high refresh rate that we're able to reach. But that's one of the things they do to save battery. Using the external display makes the battery last forever. And one of the things I'll probably say, we are missing a couple of updates where I think the specifications for battery usage on the display for the external option doesn't necessarily register yet, but I'm hoping again within the next software or so update, we'll definitely finish up. There's a few kinks here that I feel like it needs a little bit more update. But of course, I'm pretty sure you guys want to talk about gaming. And I'm not just necessarily talking about the games that we have in here. These are easy, small, like Marble Mayhem, uh, small games that you're able to basically install and run directly on the main display. The biggest thing I'll probably say, it's very simple, very easy to set up. But the big thing I will probably say is uh, the ability of running actually like a standard full game. So let's go ahead and go real quick into the apps. And of course, let's talk about Call of Duty Mobile. Because yes, this runs Call of Duty Mobile. And I do apologize for the fingerprint. That's one of the things that you definitely want to see here. But yeah, yeah, you're not missing this. It's actually, yeah, Call of Duty Mobile is not only fully functioning, it's playable. I actually get a chance to play and I'm going to share with you guys a quick sample of playing games on this using uh, the external display. So not only was I able to listen, play games, watch content, do everything I wanted to do on the actual device. Also, the display is not necessarily as big as the main display. It still played quite well. And that's one of the biggest benefits here is that the external display is truly a mini phone on the outside. This is what we've been missing from flip phones for many, many years. And Motorola is bringing it and it's bringing it very nicely and allowing us to do almost anything and everything we want to do. And that's literally the Motorola way. If you want to do it, you can definitely do it and it'll let you do it. Um, there is a few options in here for you to be able to customize your experience. And this is going to be able to personalize it. So personalizing it, learning about gestures, motor secure, the razor tips, the display setup, as well as play. And when you go in here, you can customize the video call effects, which are definitely very nice for um, automatic tracking when you're in video calls and the ability of actually getting moving around and keeping focus on the actual subject. Media controls with the volume, uh, volume rocking buttons on the outside, game on, uh, Dolby Atmos configuration in there. Uh, of course, a whole bunch of different things built in. And it kind of looks really nicely actually sitting right there on Goku. <laughs> it almost looks like it's the arc reactor from uh, Iron Man. 
But let's, start, let's, let's not focus too much. But again, gaming wise, I'm going to share with you guys a quick sample of obviously gaming on the internal display. 90 frames per second gaming on Call of Duty is absolutely fantastic. No question. It's going to be one of the better games in there. And one of the things I think a lot of people are worried about is the display and how sensitive it is. The, this device entirely is IP52, which means it has a dust resistance on it. But the internal display actually feels very solid. It actually feels almost like it's a regular display. So it's not something that I'm worried too much about pushing on it. Now, I'm not actually punching it. So keep in mind, obviously, with touch sensitivity, you can increase the touch sensitivity response directly within game mode. And of course, that allows you to get a better gaming experience. So when it comes down to the camera experiences, this is where I will probably say is um, the cameras are good. You're going to be able to get great pictures out of them and you're going to be able to do really good. We don't have any 8K processing, although the 8 Plus Gen 1 does perform there. I feel like 8K is something that you not necessarily can function with it as, as well. Again, it's not intended to be uh, the best solution for taking your general usage of videos because at the end of the day, it runs at 24 frames per second and typically those files are massive. So that's one of the other things you want to keep in mind. But as you're seeing some of these images from you basically going to the park with my son, uh, taking pictures around the house and just generally walking around and using this and even actually shooting a quick video using the external display while I was filming uh, one of my reviews on uh, the e-bikes that I'd done uh, not that long ago. The biggest thing I'll probably say is that their cameras, the cameras that we have in here are going to do great. Low life performance was actually pretty surprising for me. This is something that we've seen before with the Razer Plus 2023 and you're not going to be disappointed in good lighting and even in a little bit of low lighting. I think the main sensor on the uh, on the main sensor on this the 12 megapixel will do great. Uh, the selfies on the internal, well, the selfies on the camera, of course, is going to be really good. And I, for me, honestly, I've always been one of those proponents of saying using the main sensor on the phone to take the selfies. And this is literally the easiest thing. You just shake it, you take it, you snap it and you're done. It's very easy, very simple. And of course, sharing from this is going to be really cool. So at the end of the day, I will say I am very happy to see Motorola bringing in this competitor to the game. We have yet to see how the motors, the standard motor razor is going to be the 2023 edition version and how that's going to perform. But I will probably say this, this is going to be the powerhouse that Motorola is bringing into the flip phone market. The standard razor is going to be more of the budget version of that since it's running a mid range processor, typically to what we used to see in the past. So if you're looking for a flip phone and you're looking for a flip phone that provides you um, great battery life, the 3800 milliampere battery is actually no slouch. Keep in mind, you're going to be leveraging the external display a lot more than you've used to it in the past. And that's something that we haven't been able to do. Um, so performance from the 8 Plus Gen 1, there's no question. Everything's going to work great. Uh, the 8 gigs of RAM, the model that we have in here, actually has not been that much of an issue for me. It runs really good. If you're running the stock launcher on it, you're not going to have that many issues. And even with Nova, every once in a while, I'll see a little bit of hiccups. But I think at the end of the day, the experience is very nice. There's no issues at all. Um, as far as connectivity, obviously we have 5G. I love the fact that this has eSIM and having standard uh, SIM uh, functionality options. So if I want to be able to jump in when I'm traveling, throw in an eSIM in here, it's easy, I can use it. We have NFC ready for uh, all the functionalities that we have, Android 13, Motorola's optimization, software updates. There's just a lot of things to love about the Razer Plus 2023. So with that being said, if you are in the market for a flip phone, if this is something that you like to carry, so this is, has to be a style that you like. And before I get, forget, I did actually pick up a case for this. The only case I was able to find uh, directly uh, online. And essentially, it just provides us the ability of protecting our phone and making it a little bit more secure. Let's go ahead and share with you guys real quick. And this case actually provides the protection that you'd expect. When you close it, you're still able to see the actual color of the phone. And of course, the back is covered and the front is covered. Uh, the biggest thing, obviously, I will say is wireless still works, of course everything works really good. And this is definitely very nice. I'm sure we're going to start seeing more accessories come into the market and we'll definitely be able to have more options to customize there. Uh, I really am really interested to look for a, let's say, um, a, what's it called? Like a, a bicycle clamp, a clamp to be able to basically put the phone in it while it's closed so that I can actually use it in that small form factor. So with that being said, I will say my hope is that you found this video helpful. I hope that the Razer Plus is something that you guys are looking for and will fit your needs. Like and subscribe as usual and thank you very much for the support and as always, I'll see you in the next one.